Hey there, Pirate Monkey crew, and welcome to another Marvel Crisis Protocol miniature painting tutorial. Today, we are working on Iron Man. So, yeah, I've been pretty hyped to do this one. Iron Man is, of course, one of my favorites, and I'm sure he's pretty much one of all of our favorites, but I've really been looking forward to this specific model. It's just such a classic pose, and I saved the best for last as much as I could. So, how we're going to start with this is... Kind of in the same techniques that we've been using where we put down kind of like a cool undercoat and then we zenithal prime over this with white then we do our brighter uh, warmer color on top of that so what i'm doing here is i'm really just washing quinacridone magenta uh, it's just a pure pigment magenta over the entire miniature um, nothing really more complex than that um, it's a wash slash glaze you know however you want to think about it uh, and really all i'm trying to make sure that i do here is I, I try to limit the amount of pooling that's happening on the model. Uh, you know, if there's a little bit of pooling in the some of the crevices, that's okay. Um, we just don't want it to be everywhere, right? <laughs> you, you'll get some kind of like weird tide pool marks, and it, it just won't it won't turn out right. Yeah. Next up, of course, I am glazing. It's a it's a scarlet paint. I don't know the exact pigment name, um, but it's the, uh, I think it's the Scarlet Ink from DW Acrylics. And it just has a really lovely kind of cool red. It's not quite magenta, it's not quite red um, kind of vibe. And so I, I, I wanted to just work in as many reds as I could into this project. And so, uh, yeah, but what I'm doing here is, um, of course I really drenched the model. So I'm lifting some of it up so it doesn't pool too much on me, like we were just talking about. <laughs> and we're just hitting with a second coat of this scarlet tone. I ended up really liking this tone. Of course, you can still kind of see the magenta underneath. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just have to try a few things and go with what works. This is the model post Zenithal Prime. Um, I'm not going to show you guys the priming. It's pretty, pretty easy. And we still have those magenta tones underneath. Uh, and yeah, we're, I'm, I'm kind of coming in a little lightly this time with the red. It's just, um... I think it's like a pyrrole red. It's the red from Kimera. Uh, it's really nice and opaque, but it, it has a little bit of transparency if you thin it. And yeah, I'm, I'm being very careful this time around uh, with this coat. The next coat, not so much. I get a little bit more aggressive, but um, it, it's always, you know, in some of these cases, it's okay to be a little bit um, cautious about how you're doing something before you really jump in whole hog you know it's a, a small change is easier to correct than a big one and you know sometimes you need confident brush strokes sometimes though you need to know how to take things you know slow and smooth and that's that's always okay as well just make sure that you don't get stuck in being slow and cautious because then it, it can kind of limit you right uh, you don't want to get trapped in that that bubble of like, oh, I'm only doing things one little increment at a time. Because then your models won't have any contrast. Um, and that's kind of the, the tricky balance that we, we try to keep with all of our painting, right? Is how, how do we have intense contrast and, you know, awesome highlights and shadows that are full of color? And also how do we, you know, render materials and blend and do all these things and maintain that intensity? And, that's for all of us to decide. That That's really where style comes from, is just making a bunch of decisions. Um, I like painting that's bold and, you know, kind of brave in that way, where you have people making confident brushstrokes, and other people really love super hyper-technical stuff that's super smooth. So yeah, I try to show you a little bit of both. I, I love technique, but I also love intuitive, aggressive, you know, kind of painting. The important thing, though, is that we just are enjoying what we're painting and we're having fun. All of this stuff is always just to help you guys out. And a lot of these steps are, you know, I, I maybe it's just that I've been doing it too long, but a lot of it doesn't seem seem too crazy technical. I hope that it isn't. I hope that I'm showing you guys enough that you're getting a good full idea of what's going on. And then also, 
not having to like dredge through these videos. <laughs> So here we're getting much more aggressive, all right? Um, I've kind of figured out where the highlights are and I'm, I'm gonna be a little careful. Like I'm not just slapping it on, but at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm, the paint is much less thin, right? I really want that really intense red to pop for me. And the, you know, this process is much more indicative of my style in general. Like this isn't the end. I mean, if, if you want just like a really nice tabletop Iron Man, or like even high tabletop Iron Man, you can do this step and have that be it. But, you know, of course, I always like to take things a little bit further. Um, I, I've been saving Iron Man for last. And, um, you know, of course, we, we bring up the highlights and we knock it down, I think, a couple more times. I'm still trying to keep in mind, like, all of the shapes, though, that I'm painting because I, I still need the highlights and shadows to kind of line up well uh, you know it's it's one of those things where you know we're never going into this willy-nilly like you know we're trying to be intentional about everything that we're doing but sometimes we're being more aggressive with the level of change that we're committing to and sometimes we're being a little bit less aggressive and even though he's in a mechanical suit like i'm still trying to find the the larger shapes that make up the suit right um, so even though, you know, it might be a bunch of panels, it's still kind of wrapping around a cylindrical object. So I'm going to treat it as a cylinder and then come back and kind of pick those, those things out a little bit more individually later. Um, you know, I, I like painting that way because it, it, it simplifies things for me and I can just paint, right? I don't like roadblocks as much as possible. You know, I know they're kind of inevitable, but, um, I'd rather just paint. You know, and if I have a template for painting, then it makes makes it a lot easier. It makes it flow a lot better, and I second guess myself a lot less. Having some kind of painting philosophy is definitely a, a good thing for sure. Yeah, do you guys have a painting philosophy? Let me know in the comments. So yeah, um, getting close to the the red here. Um, really, what was going on in my mind as I was painting this was like, the, the, I really like how bright this is, but it's kind of flat and boring. Um, that's one thing about like opaque paints is uh, they're boring, <laughs> in my opinion at least. Um, I I really think where things start to get really cool is when you start adding transparent glazes over that meaning like paint with transparent pigment. Um, it really makes something happen um, that's special to the model. And so if I, if I was gonna glaze over this, it wouldn't do much besides knock the red down and kind of shift into that more scarlet tone. So what I decided to do um, is mix a little bit of white with a little bit of a warm yellow and do a little bit of sketching on the model to really pop out those highlights and give me something to glaze over uh, here in a minute because if I if I don't have anything brighter then it just doesn't work well so here we are gonna get real bold and again really just thinking about the the shapes I'm gonna start to observe some of the smaller shapes but not all of them so um, 
it just really depends on what part of the model I am working on. Like the upper part of the model, especially like the chest and the head, um, I tend to give a little bit more precedence to it. It just, the more detail you add into any given section of a model or like painting, it draws the, the eye a little bit more because there's just more to look at. Um, as long as everything else just generally is accurately highlighted and shadowed, um, then that's great. And you know, it, it still is pleasing to look at, but like the face in the, the upper part of the body is really where, you know, you're not going to look at the toes to know, think <laughs> like you're not going to look at the toes to try to interpret what the person's thinking about. Right. Um, it's like the, the head, the chest and the arms, at least in my opinion, maybe the hips, but, uh, you, I, I think you're getting my point. I'm rambling. <laughs> the other thing too is, you know, Iron Man's armor has always been kind of glossy, um, glossy, you know, glossy surfaces tend to have harsh reflections underneath like a underneath a very thick coat of like a a varnish like a high gloss varnish like there's things going on on the varnish itself and there's things going on underneath the varnish um, and so trying to replicate that through doing this kind of aggressive sketching and then glazing techniques is just a really great way to capture the energy of the material uh, you know it, it's not going to be entirely accurate unless you really really labor over it and to be honest in this scale it's not always you know you're not going to get it done in a reasonable amount of time if you want to be accurate or realistic about it um but yeah we're just trying to get the the feeling or impression of something reflective and i like to do that through this sketching technique and again all of this process is stuff that like you know if you want to push it further you can if you don't like it let's say you wanted to stop the step before and just finish by black lining and maybe doing a little bit of edge highlighting, then that's a perfectly fine way to finish this model. It would look great, but I just, I just wanted to give it some extra umph. You know, doing multiple rounds of this just to really reinforce the highlights that you're painting in is always great. And of course, I'm just doing two rounds of the same color. You can brighten it up a little bit if you want. You know, you can add a little bit more white. Also, people always worry about like, how are you going to blend sketching? Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, glazing is great. It, it really does enough to confuse the eye that, you know, it doesn't feel quite as harsh once you get some of those glazes on top of it. I also just don't think that perfectly blended is as important as other people. You know, if it looks cool, you enjoy doing it, who cares? And again, th this is partially to my painting process and preference. Like my favorite, some of my favorite painters are uh, Joaquin Sorolla, John Singer Sargent, you know, Renoir, Monet, Van Gogh, you know, they, none of them really paints super smoothly or super like always super super accurately it's about the feeling of it i you know i can always feel their work I, I do like the technical aspects of you know some of those guys but you know looking at a a salon era french painting that's just perfectly painted just doesn't evoke as much for me it's the same thing with miniature painting like the super perfectly painted you know, perfectly smoothly painted miniature just doesn't, doesn't do much for me. It's like, wow, that's cool. But all I can see is the technical work. Like I don't feel anything from it, but that's just me. I'm not trying to like, uh, put my preferences on you guys. I'm just trying to explain why I'm making the decisions that I'm making for this particular miniature. So if it wasn't grossly apparent, we have moved on into glazing this and, uh, pretty sure I'm glazing something like a combination of the 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 original red mixed with the scarlet color about 50 50 ish um and thin down with a little bit of uh i think it's the laman medium from gw uh it's just a nice you know transparent 
acrylic medium. Um, it flows nicely. And again, just not trying to cause pooling. And this one I'm going to glaze that uh, original magenta pigment. We've kind of come full circle here. Um, and oddly enough, it does not make the miniature look magenta. Um, the reds and yellows are just too intense that like even optically when they mix it, it makes it feel like it is orangish um, and not necessarily magenta. You'd have to apply a lot of magenta. Um, but it's also thinned down quite a bit. Uh, I've taken that that pure, you know, that brightest red that we were using before, and I'm using just a little bit of that as a glaze to just kind of perk up this uh, this red armor one last time. Um, the nice thing about working so thin is that even though you may not see all the layers underneath, they're all kind of pushing on the color, like pushing it forward, and it, it just helps make it feel cohesive. I don't know another way to put it. Like all of the colors are acting in a in kind of like a symbiotic way. And I, you know, oddly enough, the, the longer I paint, the more I find that like, if you just do these processes, like in cycles, you end up with a good result. I don't know how, how or why it works really well, but like, you know, if I did the, if I did the same process over again, almost entirely, just maybe a little bit more carefully, it would look even sharper, right? Like if I was going to take it to a competition, that's probably what I would do. <laughs> um, it, and so yeah, it's it's just really funny and really odd. But yeah, it's I, and one of the the things that I've kind of been hitting on here it seems like recently a, a few times is the fact that like if you do a bunch of simple processes enough times, then it tends to lead to some level of complexity which is really cool um because it, i think it makes painting a little bit more approachable you know if you're like hey if i just keep trying at this process eventually i'm going to get something that looks awesome and i think that you you are so uh anyway guys i really hope that you enjoyed this video thank you again for joining me for the series thank you for continuing to support me on patreon you know, I hope that everybody's doing well, it's healthy. I hope you guys are staying in, wearing a mask when you go out. And um, yeah, here's a here's a finished picture of Iron Man. Um, 
really the only other things that I've done are a little bit of dark lining with like a, a purple with a touch of black and you know of course the yellow elements which I essentially just painted as yellow NMM and then with the blues just kind of using blues and turquoises and white essentially just to play with that effect um, nothing too complex that's why I didn't go over it and I'm not going over it in video so anyways thank you guys all again I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for the next video tutorial or video tutorial series I'm, I'm going to try to start to do stuff that's a little bit more personal to me um, I, I had been doing a lot of jobs but the the amount of painting jobs that I'm doing I'm trying to get really really particular about them and so I may not be doing as as much of it I just want to do stuff that I really am passionate about just because I feel like a lot of this a lot of stuff that I've been painting recently hasn't been done with a ton of like love or passion it just is out of like repetition of process because it 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 just gets stuff out the door so anyway that's all I got for you today I hope you're doing well happy painting and um yeah we'll see you next time bye